Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Sophyan Akram and I'll be talking about uh, using Articulate Studio in preparing a good eye lecture. So although it is, it is uh, a workshop, but you know, because of the time constraint, uh, we will not be doing hands-on, but I will just show you some basic features uh, of this software, which can be used to prepare a good eye lecture. Now, before we talk about the Articulate Studio, uh, first question is, what do we mean by an eye lecture? What does I stand for? You know, the I actually stands for interactive. Basically, whenever you're designing any online content, there is no physical contact between the teacher and the learner. So the most important thing is, how do you engage the learner? And this can be achieved by making the content interactive, where the students can actually actively participate while going through the online uh, course or presentation. Now, uh, IMU has um, acquired the license for this particular software, which is known as Articulate Studio. It is a suite of programs. I'll be focusing on the two major programs, which is uh, Articulate Engage and Articulate Quizmaker. So I'll just show you some basic features, how to use this program uh, to design interactive online content. Uh, now basically, the Articulate Studio, uh, the best thing about this software is that you don't have to learn new tricks. It is basically embedded in PowerPoint. And we all are using PowerPoint for preparing our presentations. So you prepare your presentation as usual in PowerPoint. <laughs> And then using Articulate Studio, different softwares, you can uh, make the content interactive and more engaging. So basically, the first one, which is Articulate Engage, allows you to add media-rich interactions in your PowerPoint presentations. The second one, which I mentioned to you just now, the Articulate Quiz Maker, allows you to embed quizzes in the lesson. And these could be different types of assessment tools which can be uh, used in your presentation. Now, <coughs> Articulate Engage, I will show you actually the software as well, and just to show you how you can uh, embed the interactive content in your presentation. So it has actually 20 different formats that you can use. You can add images, you can add animations and videos, and you can label images, and you can release content in a sequential manner. So I'll show you some of the examples later. This is how the Articulate Engage interface will look like. The Articulate Quiz Maker will also allow you to insert different types of assessment tools in your presentation. You can have things like true files, you can have multiple choice questions, you can have hotspot, so you uh, put an image in your presentation and students have to identify the area which is of interest. And there are many different uh, uh, types of assessments that you can embed into your, uh, your lesson. Now, before you create an eye lecture, there are a few things that are important to, to be able to create a good eye lecture. First of all, you need to have a clear lesson plan. Whether your eye lecture is, you, is used for a flipped classroom, then you have to put a lot of information there and then the students will come in the classroom for discussion. If you are using it for chunking the content, then you have a small eye lecture with some information, and the rest you will be covering in the lecture. So you have to decide what your lesson plan is, and accordingly you design the eye lecture. Then you have to prepare, as I told you, it is PowerPoint based, so whatever content you prepare, you prepare in PowerPoint, and then you go to Articulate Studio and you can make the, the content more interactive and more fun. Also, if the images and video or animation that you're going to upload into your presentation, they should be ready. You just make a folder, put everything there, so that you can easily drag and drop these images and uh, animations into your presentation. Also, you can plan, as I told you, the quiz maker. Have some questions ready that you can uh, put inside uh, the presentation to actually have better interaction from the student side. 
So these are some of the points which are important. So what I will do now, as I told you, we don't have enough time to, to do hands-on for all of you. Uh, but those of you who are interested, uh, IMU, you know, we have laptops with the professional software. You can take it from e-learning and you can practice and try and, uh, you know, learn all the different tricks. Uh, so what I will do now, I'll just show you some basic features of the software, how to use different uh, features. And then, you know, from there on, you can, you can try it on your own. So let's get our hands dirty. Only me. You can just sit and watch. Okay. So now, if I just show you uh, just what I did, actually. So in the folder. Okay. So for example, just to show you, I have this small presentation in PowerPoint, just a few slides. In PowerPoint, this is how the slides look like. So you have an image, you have uh, another image, you have some text, image, text, right? This is how you prepare your PowerPoint with images and text. Now you want to make this presentation more interesting, more fun and interactive. And this is where the articulate uh, engage comes in and the Articulate Quiz Maker as well. So if you see here, in this PowerPoint, because of this computer, the software is installed, so you can see an Articulate tab on the top here. So what you do, you just go to Articulate, okay? And you will see on top a lot of uh, icons there. So you have Quiz Maker, you have Engage Interaction, you can add in characters into your uh, slides, video, Flash, web objects, or you can uh, insert whatever you want. You can record narration after you have added in all the content. You can record your audio narration, okay? Or you can import audio if you want to. If you have already have an audio recorded, you can just import audio and it will play in the background of the slide. You can add music, whatever you want to do. So let's look at articulate engage. If you click on this. It will take you to that interface which I just showed you in the PowerPoint. So you just say that you want to create a new uh, slide. Okay, now you see all those different types of um, formats are available here. Okay, so let's choose one of these. Let's choose labeled graphic, for example. And you have to give it a name. Maybe I can give it the name Brain. Okay. Preparing uh, an articulate engaged interaction is very easy. It's just a form. You just fill up the form, just put the information there, and then when you publish it, it will appear as a very nice interactive content. It will open in the articulate engaged software now. There you have it. So this is the image. <coughs> okay, so I have the folder there. I will just get an image from there. So for example, this one. Okay. If you want to record audio, you just click here. And if you have a microphone, you can always record an audio. OK? And then, OK. For example, you just put here brain parts. Okay, so the image comes here now. You can label different parts. So frontal lobe, temporal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, right? So you can have, you can put the description of the frontal lobe over here. Okay, whatever. I'm just going to put something just to show you. Okay, you can put a description here. 
Okay. All right. So this is just one way of doing it. Let me just show you the preview of this. This is how it will appear when the student will look at it. So it appears like this. Clicking on each one of them, whatever you have provided the information there, the student can actually read it. And if you have an audio recording, they will also listen to what you are saying. Okay? So they can actually, by clicking on all these different areas, they can read it in detail. You can add further images with each one and the image will zoom up and they can actually interact with the image and they can learn different aspects of the image. Okay, now let's um, add another one. So save and return. Let me just show you how we add a quiz as well. So let's add a quiz. Okay, create new. Quiz title, maybe question one. Okay. Now, for the quiz, as I told you, you have different formats to choose from. Okay. There you are. So, what type of question you want to give? Say you want to give a graded question. All right. Which format should I choose? Anyone from the audience? Sorry? Matching, matching, matching. This one? Okay. Let's insert this one. Okay. Now you have two columns here. This is the choice and this is the match. So for example, you put here spinal cord. Uh, you put here limbic system. Uh, you put here cerebellum. Okay. So spinal cord is ascending and descending tracks, limbic system is related to emotions, cerebellum related to balance. Okay. So let's preview this slide now. So I'm just going through very quickly just to show you the, the power of this software. You see, now it will show you the options here and the answers are jumbled up now. So you have to match them together. So balance goes with sorry, balance, tracks with spinal cord, emotions with limbic system. When you submit, it will provide you immediate feedback whether the answer was correct, whether it was wrong. And you can also add in with each answer you can add a description. So if the student get it wrong, they can always get instant feedback, why the choice was wrong or why it was correct. And there are different types of uh, questions, as I told you, you can add in graded questions, survey questions, so you can also collect information from the students. So if you upload an eye lecture before your face-to-face -face session with the students, you can collect survey responses from them. So maybe you can ask them the areas that they are not clear about. So maybe if you can get an idea what the students are generally saying and in your lecture you can address that point in, in more detail. So it allows you to interact with them both ways. You can provide them feedback through the answers of the questions and you can collect their feedback through survey type uh, questions and so on. Okay. So what I will do now, because we don't have enough time to, to go through all the features, I'll just show you some examples of eye lectures that I have prepared and some other people. So just to give you an idea after you have done all this, the steps are very simple. The only thing is that, as I told you earlier, you have to plan your, your lesson. You have to have all the information available with you. You sit with the software and it's very easy. As easy as one, two, three. So I'll just show you some of the examples now. Okay, another point before um, I, I go to the examples, if you are going to record narration uh, with your slides, because we are not professional uh, you know, actors and speakers, at least I'm not, so it's better to, to write a script before you do that. Then it's very, so for example, 
I'll show you this is a script that I wrote for the, this particular eye lecture, overview of the nervous system. So you have what you're going to say in slide one, slide two, slide three. Uh, so it's easier for you when you're recording an eye lecture. So you have natural flow uh, when you will be speaking. Otherwise, you can do it without the script, but then it will take long time. You have to re-record when you say something wrong. Anyway. So let me just show you some examples. Actually, it was open, but because the computer shut down, so we lost the um, uh, web pages. I'll just open some of the examples just to show you. OK. Let's look at the same one, overview of the nervous system. Not this one. Okay. So this short presentation is an overview of nervous. Let's begin with a simple question. Why do we need a nervous system? Well, there are control. Let's look at some basic properties and functions of the nervous system. So now in this one, this particular format, you have different uh, headings. The students can click on the heading and read the description as they want. For example, different, yeah, these are the major functions of the nervous system. The neurons or nerve cells process and transmit information. They are inter the adult human nervous system can, at a very basic level, our nervous system moving up the order of complexity. Higher functions of the nervous system are also called Nervous system can also be divided in. Now let's have a look at the, the major parts of central nervous system and their main function. Cerebellum, which is located behind and slightly. The spinal cord is a long, thin, tubular bundle of nervous. The brain stem has integrative functions being involved. Let's now look at the events that occur at a chemical synapse, which is the connection between an action potential arrives at the presynaptic terminal depolarization of this part of the neuronal cell membrane opens voltage gate the action potential which is thus generated in the post synaptic neuron travels and the signal this way passes from one neuron to the other let me end this session with some interesting facts i'm just showing you different formats of the slides that I showed you in the beginning for articulate engage so you can based on the information that you're going to share with the students you can choose different styles for example this is like a, like a checklist so just to show uh, share with them some interesting facts about the, the human brain is the most complex organ in the human body and probably the most complex creation present in the whole universe each of the 100 the human brain is regarded as the fattest organ in our body. About 60% of the brain is comprised of fat. And you have been told, fat is no good. Another interesting fact. Your brain is also a sugar junkie. It feeds only on glucose. And the energy consumed by the brain is approximately 25 watts, which is sufficient enough to illuminate a refrigerator light bulb. The brain itself is devoid of pain receptors. This simply implies that the human brain feels no pain. So brain surgery shouldn't hurt. The human brain in many instances has been found to fool human beings, making them to perceive things differently from the reality. And you're always asked to use your brain, but please do so cautiously. I hope I was able to. I'll show you this other one. Maybe some, some uh, uh, lecture with a quiz. So I can show you how to insert the quiz. Hi, students. I'll come back. Let's talk about hemostasis.
can also add a video at the site of vessel injury the first platelets arrive to start sealing the wound simultaneously the coagulation cascade with its various well, this is the quiz as we tried just now matching Let me show you another one, if I can get there quickly. By the way, any questions while I'm searching for the eye lecture? Any question anyone has? If you want to ask about using Articulate to produce um, interactive online content. For example, In this uh, short presentation, uh, we'll be discussing right. the normal heart sounds. So let me show you I am this looking. one. So this is a quiz, the hotspot. So you put a picture there, you can ask a question. For example, this question is, in order to listen to the mitral valve, where will you place your center? So as you know, mitral valve is at the apex area. So basically it is this area. So if the student click here, then they will get a response that the question, the answer is correct. So while preparing the uh, presentation, you select the area which is the right area. If the student click there, they will be awarded points for that. I hope with this short present. So there's another one. Simple, choosing the right answer. For example, which of the following do you think could lead to paradoxical S2 splitting? So this is the answer. So they can choose the answer from here. And they will get immediate feedback. Now you can add uh, a description as I told you for the answer over. This is a default answer that will appear. But you can always add description to your answer. You can add uh, images, you can add videos, all that. So basically, I'm just, I'm just showing you the very basic features of using Articulate Engage uh, in developing online Sometimes content. there's an audible. So basically, uh, if you go to the Articulate, web, Articulate Studio website, there are a lot of videos there. If you go to the community, they have uploaded a lot of videos on how to use Engage, the quiz maker, the presenter, the storyline and all those softwares uh, which are available and it's very easy to use and once you get a hang of it and you are able to produce this uh, interactive online content the students actually enjoy it and it provides them a platform where they can actually uh, participate in their own learning process so this is basically the idea behind it uh, so those who are interested, you know, the, the our e-learning staff is always available to provide you with basic training, uh, and you can always, you know, uh, produce nice content uh, for the students to interact with. Okay, uh, I think I'll end here. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, please uh, let me know that I can answer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, the problem we articulate. Uh, yes. 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 So, the one, one is cheaper or the two that's around the office, office mix. Yes. 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 No, office mix is is another plugin that you can actually download freely from the internet, and it is also embedded into PowerPoint, and you can record video, record audio, annotate the, the content. But of course, it doesn't provide you the versatility that Articulate does. Uh, you know, the look and feel and the options that you have. So the Articulate Studio provides you a lot of, of you know, options to make your content look good. Uh, but of course, if you just want to produce an interactive online content, Office Mix can be used for basic uh, purposes. Uh, there are many other softwares available now, you know, but uh, this is the one because IMU has license for this software and we are, uh, you know, uh, we can always borrow a laptop from the e-learning department and we can sit and uh, design our content.
and the feedback from students has been very encouraging. We are really enjoying the content and they are actually asking for more. Thank you very much. And any other question? Yes, sir. Sir, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Exactly. So it's very important that lecture is interactive lecture. It will add at the end. This is yeah. important because usually we we conducted a cognitive cognitive study where we asked the students how uh, uh, how much of attention, how much understanding you have developed with this lecture yeah. without quizzes and mm -hmm. other with quizzes, and then we the the uh, the students were uh, administered the uh, uh, yeah. And we found that those lectures with added quizzes, the, the students perform well. Exactly. So a correlation with yeah. the added quiz was much more than the correlation between simple lecture or a formative lecture without quizzes. So yeah. quizzes added actually uh, is very important for learning Definitely. and longer retention. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. And another point about quizzes, it's formative. You know, so students don't, they are not afraid of getting a wrong answer, getting penalized for that. This is one point. Second point, the quizzes can be added before you release the content. You know, So this allows them to think about it. Or the quizzes can be added after you have discussed a particular topic. So quiz can be added you know, in the beginning of the lecture or at the end of the lecture. Then the quiz, the content of the quiz will be different according to what you want the students to, to learn from it. Yeah, so it's basically a learning tool, you know, yeah, the quiz. Yeah. So that way you call it a quiz-based lecture or lecture-based quiz. Yeah. So if you add it uh, before or you add it at the end. So yeah. it's like brainstorming when you add it in uh, exactly. before you like Exactly. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. One last one. Yes, sir. <laughs> you said that present generation, the millennials, yeah. their attention span is not more than 7 to 10 minutes. Okay. So if you keep your quizzes at the end, yeah. would it be less effective than if you were to interper intersperse your questions? No, they should be interspersed actually. The questions should be interspersed. Yeah. Yeah. If you leave the quiz towards the end, then maybe they will just leave it. <laughs> so if it is in the middle of your lesson, uh, it is actually better, you know, for them to, to yeah. And the I lecture ideally should not be very long. It should be very small, 15, 20 minutes maximum. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, the good thing about I lecture is they can always pause it, they can regain their attention span and come back and watch the remaining I lecture. So, you know, this is the benefit of online interaction. Okay? Any more questions or comments? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.